Hi, my name is Ian. I'm one of the Hero Products customer service representatives. In this video, I'll be showing you how to completely clean a canister of colorant, how to refill that canister with water, and then flush it to make it as clean as possible. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up the TimpWise program. That's the program that you see on the screen in front of you right now. The screen that you have may look different than this. You may have more uh, tabs up top. You may have more or less icons along the right hand side. That's all okay. But what we want to do to make sure that everyone who's watching this video is going to have everything that they need to do is click on login on the left hand side, choose service tech from the drop down menu and then click on OK. At this point, if you didn't have the icons available that you need, you you will now. At this point, I'm going to draw your attention over to the canister screen. This is the screen that you normally do your purging from or refilling of your canisters. I want you to look at the black colorant, which is number three here. And I'm only choosing black because it's uh, it's easy to distinguish these yellow and red bars uh, that, I'm, that I'm drawing your attention to. You'll see this yellow bar here, and what that represents is a warning. When your colorant level reaches that yellow bar, it'll warn you that you're running low on colorant. When it reaches the red bar here, that means it will not allow you to dispense anymore. So I just wanted you to know about this because it will play a factor in what we're doing. So I'm going to exit this screen now by clicking OK. And now what we're going to do is actually empty out one of the canisters. To do that, we're going to go down to Manual Formula, which is on the bottom right hand corner, and we're going to click on that. And because we use black in the last example on the other screen, we'll go ahead and continue using black now. Uh, if you look to the right hand side of the black colorant, or all of your colorants for that matter, you'll see a Y plus. Uh, your letter may be different than Y. And that's okay. What those letters represent is an ounce. So one Y would be one ounce. What we're going to use is 10 Y, which would be 10 ounces. And then we're going to dispense that. Now at this point, it's important to know what you're going to be doing with the colorant that you're dispensing. If you want to reuse it, then you need to be dispensing into a clean container. If you're going to be recycling it, then you need to have a container that's the appropriate size for the amount of colorant you're dispensing. You can use a five gallon pail and dispense a lot of different colorants into that pail for recycling. Uh, you can put that five gallon pail on your can shelf inside the machine. Or if that doesn't work, you can dispense into a one gallon container and then as that fills up, you can pour that into a five gallon container. However is gonna work best for you, go ahead and use that option. What we'll do now is dispense. So just go ahead and click on that. It's gonna ask you to insert your can you'll say OK. And as you can see, it's filled that up and uh, it wants me to click on OK. What you would have noticed there is that that 10 ounces dispensed very quickly and that's because I'm in something called demo mode. I'm not actually dispensing colorant. I'm only using this as an example to show you what to do. I have no colorant being dispensed from a machine right now. And what we'll do is continue on dispensing 10 ounces of black at a time. Click dispense insert can, click OK, click OK again, and continue doing that. Eventually we'll get to this point where it says some components are not available. Now a component is a colorant, uh, so what it's telling us is that some components are not available, which means black is not available in this circumstance. So what we want to do is click on view. Now from this screen we need to refill the black colorant. We only want to refill it in the software. We do not want to pour colorant into the canister. So again, do not pour colorant into the canister. Only tell the software that we've added colorant to trick it into thinking that it's full. To do that, you want to click on this uh, uh, paint bucket here. And you can simply click on the blue icon up here that says full. And then click add. And it's going to refill that canister for you. Now click on OK. It's going to ask you to insert the can. You say OK and it's going to go ahead and dispense that. Now you're going to want to continue dispensing until the canister is completely empty. Continue doing this for as many canisters that you need to empty out. Whether or not that's one or all of the canisters in the dispenser. Once all of the canisters have been drained following all the steps that we've already outlined, then you need to clean off the nozzles with a damp towel and clean water and clean up any overspray that's spattered out when you're dispensing and the nozzles start to spray air.
At this point, we'll need to remove the agitation paddles from the canisters. So this is the old style A200 canister. We start by unplugging the agitation lid and removing it. As you can see here, uh, there is a support bracket held on with two screws that you're, you're seeing with the screwdriver pointing to them. You want to remove those two screws. You can now remove the support bracket. And as you can see, we rotate the paddle there so it easily comes off. And then we remove the paddle. And what we're showing you here is the bottom of the paddle has this circular uh, piece and that needs to fit down inside the very center of the canister. Uh, there are some little grooves that that has to slide into when you put it all back together. Place your support bracket back on. Insert your two screws. and make sure that the paddle rotates freely. We'll now remove the paddle from a newer style A200 series canister. We'll start by unplugging the agitation lid and removing the lid from the canister. As you can see, we'll rotate the paddle so that it aligns nicely with the support bracket. Using both hands, we'll lift the support bracket up and if you look at the support bracket, there's a nub on either side that protrudes out. That is up. Make sure you keep that in mind when you put this back together. Again, we pull out the paddle. And on the bottom of this, there is also the same round piece that needs to slide into the bottom grooves of the canister. Again, making sure that those nubs are pointing up. You need to get the paddle aligned with the hole in the support bracket. It may take a little bit of finessing to get it in. And then make sure that the paddle rotates freely. We'll now remove the agitation paddle from an A400 series canister. First remove the cap on top of the paddle. And with a pair of needle nose pliers, you want to squeeze the two tabs while lifting up on the paddle. It'll slide off the shaft and to replace it simply slide it back over, align the tabs with the hole in the top of the paddle, push down until it clicks into place, and when you look inside of the cap you'll see that there's some some grooves here that we're pointing to at the pliers. You want to line those up with the paddle so that the cap slides on easily. Now that the agitation paddles are removed from the canisters, we need to clean them off. Use a soft bristled brush, some warm water, mild dish detergent if necessary. If you don't have a sink available, you can use a five gallon pail filled with warm water. At this time, do not put the paddles back in the canisters. We now need to clean any remaining colorant out of the canisters. To do this, fill the canisters with halfway with warm water. Using a towel on your hand, reach inside the canisters and scrub them clean. You want to make sure that there's no color remaining on the bottom of the canister or on the sides of it. Also get the colorant out of the crevices along the bottom edge of the canister. You can also use a bottle brush if that helps. You now need to remove the water from the canister. Do that the same way that you remove the colorant from the canister. You may need to repeat the cleaning process several times to get it as clean as possible. 